I'm Kay Cote, host of the Business Spotlight series, and welcome to another episode. Today, I have Finn Deersley, founder and CEO of Breakspear Energy, as my guest today. Today, we're going to be talking about his business, his journey to entrepreneurship, and challenges and best practices that he's had along the way. And we're going to give you a sneak peek into what it's really like to own and operate a business. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations like this one. Finn, welcome and thank you so much for being here today. Uh, please give me a little brief overview about your background and tell us about your business. Well, firstly, thank you very much for having me on the podcast, Kay. Um, so a bit about my background. Uh, so back where I went to university when I was 18 uh, to a uni in England called Loughborough, um, and in my second year at university, I started doing door to door sales um, to earn a bit of money on the side. Um, and I started selling these free government funded boilers to people. So if people were on a low income or they claimed some government benefits, um, we could offer them a new boiler, which would be all fully funded for them. So I started doing that part time and very, very quickly. Um, was earning good money and got very motivated. So I started doing it full time uh, while trying to hold down my degree. Um, so that's how I kind of got into the energy sector, really. And from there, I set up my uh, own sales generation company um, in my third year at university. Um, and I started uh, working with a load of uh, self-employed university students who would all go door to door. And then I was the main communication between them and the installation companies. Um, so we would generate loads and loads of leads and then sell them to these companies who would then install the boilers for these people. Um, and that was going really well. Uh, and uh, I was due to have a placement uh, in my fourth year at university uh, in London, but that got canceled because of COVID. So the university basically said to me, look, you're going to have to go back to do your final year or you can do this thing called a year in enterprise where you uh, set up a business and see how that goes. So I thought, you know what, why not? Let's have a go. Uh, so I took the sort of lead generation model and built it into a fully integrated installation company. So over the course of six months, we got all of our accreditations and qualifications I reached out to a load of subcontractors to do the actual um, boiler installs and then kind of built the company from there on. Um, and in our first year, we went from a standing start to recruiting 16 full time members of staff and turning over just over two million in that first year. So um, and that was while I was at university. So it was very full on. Um, <laughs> but it was uh, yeah quite incredible, really, to see that growth. Wow, that is so cool. I love hearing your story and like yeah. kind of how that that pivot sort of gave you this new opportunity that you took and it find, you know, found some huge success. And so um, I'd love to hear now a little bit about the role you currently play in your business. Like, what does that look like? And what kind of like what kind of hours does that look like per week? Yeah, so. I mean, hours vary massively. I, I see myself as a uh, problem solver, essentially, in the business. Chief problem solver is probably what my title is. Um, <laughs> so when there's lots of problems, I have to work a lot. When there's less problems, I have to work less. Um, but essentially, if no one else in the company can solve the problem, then it lands on my desk. And then I've got to try and deal with it and, and find a resolution. So that's kind of a very basic uh, way of explaining what I do. Um, I think more specifically, my main two focuses in the business is one about bringing on and finding the right talent and people to help grow the business. Um, and then on the other side of things is looking to uh, explore new opportunities within the energy sector and beyond to try and grow the customer side of the business. Um, so I see my role as sort of twofold, um, but really I'm getting involved in finance, compliance, sales, ops, HR, the whole lot. So uh, that's life of a startup, really. Oh, it truly is. Like everything you're yeah. saying really resonates with me too. And um, so kind of like, where are you at with employees? How many employees who do you currently have? 
Yeah, so we've been on a bit of a roller coaster over the last, well, we set up the business in 2021. Um, as I said, that first year we did mega well. Um, we're, we went up to 16 members of full-time staff. And then the government scheme that we were working on uh, came to an end. So we literally went from in 2022, in March, we did about 350 grand of revenue in one month. In April, the following month, we did zero. So we literally went from here to nothing. Um, so we had a really tough end to 2022, where we basically had to let off all of those members of staff and begin the closure of the business. Uh, which was super tough. Um, I took some time away, went traveling and sort of was thinking about what am I going to do next? Because I thought, you know, I'm going to have to get a job at this point. Um, but then in 2023, we had a new government scheme that got announced in the UK. Uh, so I quickly, you know, started doing my research again, looking into the commercial opportunity. And this one, we had um, confirmation that it was going to go on until 2028. So we knew that we had plenty of time to, you know, to grow, scale the business um, and to explore other revenue streams, which would sort of future proof the business. So we weren't just reliant on that one revenue stream. Um, so in 2023, we sort of started the business again, if you like, um, from the ground. And we're now back up to we've got 10 members of staff. Um, and we're we've got big uh big growth plans over this year where we think we're going to probably triple the size of the business we're hoping to um over the next nine months so it's exciting busy scary um all in one at the moment oh definitely and I, it's really it's really inspiring too that you you know had the second opportunity to like kind of take the knowledge that you got from that first opportunity and really invest it into you know, growing and scaling this, this new one. Yeah. So um, I'd love to share, you know, what is one thing you wish people knew more about your business? About my business? Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's a tough question. Um, I think, I think the sector in, in the UK, um, all government schemes have kind of built up a bit of a bad reputation um, because there's been a lot of cowboys over the years that have come in to get a bit of money and then leave and they've not done a good job by the customer because um, they're so profit focused. And what we're really trying to do is instead of trying to grab a bit of money and then running, we really want to build a long term, sustainable, reliable company uh, that can try and ch start to change this this poor reputation that the industry has um, and start to show people that actually, you know, it's not a scam and uh, that you can get good quality work for free if you qualify um, and that people don't need to be worried of, you know, people running off and t taking things or doing bad quality installs that, you know, they've got, you know, we've got a good reputation and we're going to do as we say. That's what we're trying to do here. Oh, that's really, that's really powerful. And that really speaks for your business too. And that kind of leads me right into my next kind of section of questions, talking about yeah. marketing and, and, you know, how you're marketing yourself. And I'm always curious what successful businesses are doing. Uh, so kind of how much of your business are you investing into marketing? Do you have a marketing budget per month that you're, that you're working around? At the moment, we spend very little on marketing. The only real marketing spend that we have is our employees' time. Um, so I think I had mentioned earlier on in the in the conversation that I had originally built a business, a sales company, before building the installation uh, side of the business. So we generate all our sales internally um, through our own door-to-door -door sales teams. So at the moment, we don't really do much in the way of, you know, marketing in terms of, you know, Google ads, Facebook ads, website spend. Um, mm -hmm. We have just spent a lot of money on a website because we thought that built, um, you know, gave a bit of trust in ourselves, showing, you know, a quality website and good reviews online and stuff. But at this stage, we haven't yet delved into, you know, all the social media side of things and the ads uh, but it's something that I'm wanting to look at over the next 
sort of a few months because I think there's a real uh, opportunity, definitely on the social media side of things, where the energy sector is quite an old traditional industry. Um, and I don't really see many companies doing the whole social media stuff um, and, and showing videos of the installs and what they do in their day to day. And I'm, I've seen some massive TikTok accounts blowing up, you know, and companies getting so much exposure and traction through these online methods. And I think I'd really like to, because I'm young myself, it's kind of utilize that to my advantage uh, and kind of explore this other avenue. Oh, definitely. I And that like yeah. adds to that messaging of like where your work is, like you can, you can continue pushing that message, your message into your marketing. Um, yeah. You know, looking at kind of how you're building your business around the people you work with, have you taken any approaches to tracking your leads? Like, do you use a CRM or how do you kind of keep everybody kind of keep your ducks in a row within the business and the people you work with? So we have got a very basic CRM system that we've built on Google Sheets. Um, it's not ideal, uh, but, you know, we're, we're still early stage in our business journey, we feel. And for the moment, that's been working quite well. Um, I've got a friend who's uh, big into sort of coding and cybersecurity and stuff. So he's um, automated a lot of the processes on the Google Sheets for us. So you can click into sales and automatically emails are sent and documents that are uploaded to certain software systems. So that's helped things massively. But at the moment, it's that we've got a very basic CRM system. Uh, I think, you know, as the business grows, it's, again, something to look into to help streamline the process um, and make it more efficient. But at the moment, yeah, we just utilize Google Sheets. Google Sheets is a good start. That's what I use too. Yeah, yeah <laughs> um, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we've been, I love like that we've been spending this time focusing on your business, but I'd really like to dive into you a little bit as a person and kind of looking back at your journey so far in entrepreneurship, what has been a memorable roadblock or hurdle that you were challenged with? You mentioned some things earlier. You can deep dive into that, or if there's something else that comes to mind, I'd love to share something you went through that you were forced to overcome and how that affected your growth as a business owner. I think the biggest struggle for me was, um, you know, in 2022 when that scheme ended um, and I, you know, had to deal with uh, a success, you know, the, this baby, you know, the business is my baby, you know, which had grown and was in a really good place suddenly you know think about and comprehend the fact that that might have to close down um, and have to be no longer because of something outside of our control uh, which was you know a government decision that we couldn't really affect uh, so that was very difficult because you know we had to let off members of staff that we had really good reputation uh, um, relationships with and also I myself had um I, I had a, a sense of like a loss of identity, really. Uh, you know, I saw myself as this, you know, business person who, you know, was successful and worked super hard. And then to have to, you know, think about, oh, you know, I'm going to maybe have to work for someone else and go into a normal nine to five job and, and take a step back. It felt like I was regressing in my life so early on. Um, and that was quite difficult to accept. Um, and, and I struggled with with that period of my life. Mm, that sounds really challenging. And how did you kind mm. of like overcome that, um, that sense of feeling? Uh, I think travel massively helped me. I went over to, to Southeast Asia for a few months. And I think it, re it made me realize, you know, that there's more to life than money and success. Um, and, you know, happiness is a massive is a massive part of why we're here and what we want. Um, and I was so focused on just work that I'd forgotten about everything else. Um, so I think that made me reconsider what my priorities in life are and what I really wanted, um, which I think actually then coming back into the business has given me um, a bit of an edge really, because it's no longer 
all about the money and the profit, but it's about building something. You know, I really want to build a brand, not just a company, but a brand that people can distinguish, understand, want to be a part of. Um, and I see that as sort of our USP now, where actually we're wanting to build something bigger than just something that's, you know, focused on our profit margins. Um, and and that time away from a business helped me realise that, that that's actually what I got. The, the enjoyment was from the building of something, not from the the actual rewards and the money. Mm -hmm. Like seeing that that thing come to life that's like bigger than yourself, you know? sure that's exactly it yeah oh well I really love that yeah yeah and just having that time away helped me realize that and so coming back into you know the industry you know when we got that good news that there was a new scheme set up I think I had a fresh set of eyes really looking at it but also you know that desire was still there to kind of prove that we could do it because we had kind of we were in the stage of showing people what we were capable of and then we had that taken away from us so I still had that you know determination to say actually you know this is our chance our second chance to show this for sure for sure I you know that like leads me right into my next question you know as you're building this momentum with this second chance where do you see your business going in the next three to five years so this next year is just focused on building the team that can run this side of the business that, you know, that it's called ECO, the, the government scheme that we work on at the moment, the energy company obligation. That's what it stands for. So my focus on the moment is to build the team so that that can self run. And then over the next three to five years, as you say, I think what I would like to look at is going into other um looking at other revenue streams so looking at sort of private work renewables property um contract work with big energy companies um and sort of uh spreading ourselves into other sort of niches um and and that's the way i can see as building and growing as a business hmm i like that too and you know kind of like leading into you know, you're working on building your team. How would you describe your leadership style in business and has it changed over the years? Uh, has my leadership style changed over the years? Um, no, I don't think it has. I'm not the, I'm not a very good manager. That's one thing I'm not. Um, I, uh, I see myself as a visionary who has, who's a creative and has lots of ideas but trying to translate that coherently and logically to people, I find quite difficult. Um, my brain's going at a million miles an hour and trying to slow down and put in methodical steps to implement that, I find quite challenging. Um, I think being young, being super driven, working super hard, I think people find super inspiring and make them want to come on board with me on the journey. Um, and that's that's the only really way I know how to lead is, you know, hard work and, you know, being trying to be inspirational. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's what I try and do. Um, but, you know, I very much understand that management, managing is a weakness of mine. So I need to bring in the right people to help um, to help me do that. Mm, you and I share that. I have the same kind of yeah. visionary. Yeah. So I completely understand the struggle. Um, so what's had, what's been your best approach to like hiring and retaining your team members? Uh, yeah, so they say that every visionary needs a completer finisher um, behind them. And that is like the perfect combination. So what I see is I'm kind of a visionary and I need some really good completer finishers who are methodical, logical, uh, attention to detail, you know, organized, I need those sorts of people. And we work really well in tandem, because there's me always trying to run at a million miles an hour. And then they're sort of pulling me back, um, and sort of reeling me in so that we have like this perfect middle ground where we're going at growing at a sustainable rate, you know, quickly, but not too quickly, we're not getting ahead of ourselves. So but they're the sorts of people that I'm trying to bring on into the company. Um, uh, in, in sort of managerial roles, because I need that. In terms of the way that we recruit, um, we use a recruitment agency who have been very good to us. And we found a lot of really good members of staff through them. 
Um, I myself am trying to bro- grow my brand on LinkedIn. So I've had quite a few, um, I post a few job adverts out there and got quite a lot of uh, interest and we've recruited a few people from LinkedIn. Um, and then for our actual um, installers who do the heating and the insulation, we usually use Indeed. Um, that seems to be where a lot of the labourers um, head to if they're looking for new work. Oh, that's amazing that you have those systems in place. And, you know, we've covered so much ground in this conversation. I've thoroughly enjoyed having this discussion with you. And I highly encourage anybody listening to this to listen to it a couple of times and just hear those inspirational nuggets that have come up. So, um, Finn, I'd love to dive into our rapid fire questions. Uh, are you ready to rock and roll through some rapid fire? Yeah. All best. right. <laughs> All right. So think of top of mind answers here. I, we've got four questions for you. Question number one is what is the key to success for you? Uh, being proactive and taking risk. So uh, there's a lot of, I call them sofapreneurs instead of entrepreneurs who sit on the sofa, come up with all these great ideas, but never act on them. Um, and that's the thing that differentiates 99% of people to the 1% that are successful in my biggest honest most honest opinion um you've got to put your money where your mouth is and invest time energy money um into something if you believe in it otherwise it's not going to happen um so i think it's going all in uh taking risk and doing doing more thinking less is is what i'd say I dig that. That's sofapreneur. I, that's a great word. I'm totally going to put that in my vocabulary. Um, yeah. <laughs> what is one piece of advice you have for other business owners? Um, oof. One piece of advice for other business owners would be, um, I think there's a solution to every single problem. It's just how hard it is to find that solution. And that's, uh, you know, I try and preach that to every single one of my staff and team members um, that there's always a get around to something, no matter how big an issue it is, however scary it might be. There's always a workaround. It's just how long it's going to take you to find that um, and whether you're prepared to do it. So whenever, you know, I have something that scares me, I try and just you know, slow down a bit and think, how am I going to tackle this? Because I will be able to, it's just a case of wanting to and uh, putting enough time and energy into finding that solution. Mm, There's so much power in taking a pause, isn't there? Like, um, what is one book or piece of content that you've taken in recently that's impacted you? Yeah, so... My favorite book of all time is Seven Habits of Highly Successful People um, by Stephen Covey. And habit number five is uh, seek first to understand before you can be understood. Mm-hmm. And I take that approach in in life as a whole um, with relatives, family members, um, in business, in sales. And I think everyone's so desperate to put across their opinions and their side of the story and what they want. But if you haven't heard what that other person wants, what that other person feels, you're already uh, trying to speak to an audience that isn't really listening. Uh, You know, they've got their blinkers on, you know, they're up against you. Whereas if you can listen with empathy and actually think, you know what, I understand where you're coming from. I really get, your you know reservations with this or i understand that you feel upset about this um naturally that person's walls come down and they're more open to hearing your side of the story Um, and it's something that uh is i think such a super powerful concept and when i've utilized that correctly in practice it, it it's been incredible the the change that i've had in conversations and relationships with people Oh, yes. The power of empathy. That I love that you said that. Um, our final question is, if you had to choose only one area of your business that you could immediately improve tomorrow, what would it be? Uh, 
it would be our the compliance side of our business. So because we work on government schemes um, and it's government regulated, we have to take so many different photos and complete so many different documents perfectly in order to get a job over the line. And it's, uh, it's a huge part of our business, which at this point we're, we are struggling with. We always seem to be a bit behind on our compliance um, and it's never up to, up to speed, uh, but we're working on that hard. Um, and I think you know that will take a lot of pressure off of us particularly on the operational side of the business, if we could try and get more up to speed on that compliance side, it would work mm. the whole the whole process would run smoother and there'd be less pressure on people. So that would be uh, one side I'd like to work on. Wonderful. Well, those were great rapid fire answers. And before we get into our final question of the day, I'd love to share with folks, how can they learn more about your company and how do they get in contact with you? Social media, anything, feel free to share. Yes, probably best is my LinkedIn. So Finn Deersley on LinkedIn. I post every day, uh, Monday to Friday on there. Um, always respond to my DMs. So if you're interested, reach out to me and I'll try and get back to you with any advice or we can have a conversation. If you're in the same industry sector, always open for a call and conversation. Uh, and then our website is uh, b-energy.uk. Uh, so you can check out uh, our website uh, there. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Finn. I have my final question for you today. What is most inspiring to you today? What is most inspiring to me today? Um, what is most inspiring to me today? It is... The understanding that you win either way. If if you succeed, you get success straight away. If you fail, you take the learning. Learning is knowledge. Knowledge is power. So either which way you win. So the biggest failure is indecision. So just move forwards, do something, fail and you learn succeed and you succeed so either which way you're moving forwards and you're progressing uh, i think it's stagnating and being indecisive which is the real enemy and i think that's motivating to know that to know that you know any decision you make is a good decision mm, well this has been such an inspiring conversation thank you so much finn for being on the show today it's been an absolute no joy thank you very much for having me